for you. So let's walk, welcome Dr. Z Ahmed. Thank you, Lori. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. So I'm Z Ahmed. I work as a biological scientist at Division of Plant Industry. My main job is to identify scale insects, including millibugs. So these are two pictures which were sent to our assistant director, Dr. Hodges, about a month ago. And he forwarded these pictures to me. And by looking at those two pictures, we were concerned. We wanted to know what it is. We had a guess. Seems like it's a Lebec millibug, but we cannot confirm it. We wanted to make sure and, and we wanted to mount it on a slide to identify under microscope to confirm with literature and with the references in the past, whether it is Lebec millibug or not. So we asked Lauren to send us specimens. So I'm going to tell a little bit about diagnostic story, how we identified it, and what we think it is. In the past, which I came to know, I came to know through the different sources that it was misidentified as cottony cushion scale. I would not blame that person who identified it cottony cushion scale because this scale, cottony cushion scale, also has an OB sac, and that OB sac looked like the back millibug sac. But if you look closely, this cottony cushion scale has orange body. And the OB sac under that body is very well organized and has ridges. If you go back and look at this millibug, it does has OB sac, but that OB sac is messy. It's not very well organized. There's no ridges. But if you're looking at this millibug from the far, or you're taking a picture from the far, you can easily confuse it with other scales, including cottony cushion scale. Well, that was a misidentification in the field, and we wanted to confirm it. That's why we asked more samples, and Lauren sent us samples. We mounted them on a slide. We compared with the literature. We compared with the reference slides in our collection. And the question which we wanted to answer, is it something new? Is something new to from outside of Florida? And the answer was no. It is a Labac millibug which was first found in Florida in 2009. So then there was another question, whether it is new introduction of Labac millibug or it's just a Labac millibug population extension from the already existing population of Labac millibug in Florida. So we did a genetic analysis and based on genetic analysis or whatever data we have available at this time, our genetic analysis based on all global populations of Labac millibug, we concluded there are four populations of Labac millibug in all over the world. Three of them are restricted in the home range. The home range of Labac millibug is Asia. So th those three populations are restricted to Asia. One population which invaded all over the world in the last couple of decades, that is group four. If this pointer is not working, but it's in the top. You can see the group four is the population which invaded all over the world. And the population of Lebac millibug, which invaded Florida in 2009, and the one which we are picking now as a heavy infestation, they are same, and they match with the global population which invaded all over the world. So answer of that question, is it something new? No. Is it something which is a new introduction of Lebac millibug from other parts of the world? No. It's the same population of Lebac millibug which already exists in Florida. It's just extension of that population. So here's uh, just few pictures. I have more pictures in further in my presentation. So Lebac millibug, if you see on my, on actually my right, it can have OV sac, which basically are clustered together. So those, I'm calling them multiple OV sac. So it can have a multiple OV sacs, and it can also have single OV sac. So if you remove 
this obvious stack is full of vax, white vax. So if you remove that white vax, you will find dark purple body. If you go in second column, if you see adult female, you find you'll see the dark purple body under that white vax. If you further dig into white ovisac, you'll find reddish purple eggs. The size of the back millibug is equal to almost equal to the seed of citrus fruit. Here's a close-up picture on my left. It's, it's a close-up of adult female. You can see it's covered with the wax, and you can see under the wax dark purple body. So th that's just few pictures for you to just know the back millibug. I will further explain how basically you can find its symptoms and further how you can detect it. So now question is, it is not something new. Why infestation of the back millibug is heavier now? That's an important question because we are finding it actually very heavy infestation, which we have seen yesterday and I have seen a couple of weeks ago, and I've been receiving samples. Why infestation is heavy now? So my expertise are in diagnostics. Based on my expertise, I have a possible answers, which are just possible answers. They're, they're, those all answers can contribute together to, uh, to basically answer the, this question, or can individually perhaps one of the main factor for this heavy infestation. So first, ans first possible answers which I can think based on my expertise as a, diagnosti as a diagnostic person or as a scale insect taxonomist, this scale was going through a bottleneck phase. I will explain later in my slide what is a bottleneck phase. So it invaded Florida in 2009, then it it basically population was heavy and population decreased and now population coming out and exploding from the bottleneck phase. That's one of the possible answers. And then there are other questions, other, other answers which I guess uh, Lauren will explain to you later, like might be a resistant to pesticide and there is a changes in management practices because of that. Then the, uh, the other, uh, the fourth, more fourth answers which I will be elaborating is a misidentification. The fifth one, failure in early detection. If you cannot detect it at early stage, you will end up with heavy infestation. And so it's, a, it's a common. When we're talking about scale insects and millibug, early detection is a challenging. Then the sixth one, failure in distinguishing active and dead population. You might have sprayed millibug, and millibug is dead, but the vex is still there. But you cannot dig millibug body from the vex, and you assume vex is there, population is alive. Or perhaps population is dead, and since it is alive, and you already think it's dead because you cannot find the dead bodies, or you cannot uh, confirm it whether it's dead or not, then it explodes. It's just failure in, in, in basically distinguishing between dead and alive population. Then. Unfortunately, one of the main predator of this, uh, this millibug is look a millibug. So it's just, it's another reason which I think of, I can think is distinguishing between natural enemies and millibug. Last possible answer which I can, uh, I can answer based on my expertise is failure in decontamination. You can, so in general, some insects which are small, scale insects is among them, millibugs is among them. They, are, they basically can easily carry through our body, through the other plants, or through uh, our uh, mechanical equipments. I will elaborate more further in my talk. So failure in decontaminating when you are moving between crops. So these are the possible answers based on my expertise. So here, let's talk about bottleneck phase. These are DPI sample analysis from last 10 years. If you see in 2009 when we first detected this millibug, we, we were looking for it because it's new and we started uh, doing survey for it and we were getting a high number of samples. Then in 2010, sample started decreasing. Then in 2011, samples 
kept decreasing and then it's, it's, it's keep decreasing until 2017 and between 2017 and 18 number of samples of this millibug were increasing. That's, that's our, these are the analysis based on the sample which I received for identification. So between 2017 and 18, we were not actively looking for this, but we were getting more samples. And then of course in 2019, we're getting higher number of samples. So here, this graph shows how it works. This is the general trend of all invasive species. When you find invasive species, which we found this in 2009, population is always high. You find that it's basically infesting different plants, it's infesting different uh, broader host range, infestation is relatively higher, and then population all of a sudden in next couple of years or next, depending on species, population starts decreasing. Then there's a, you can see there's a dip, and when it reach at the dip, this is a general trend for all species, all invasive species, so it's not specifically for this. This is one of hypotheses why I think population is exploding. So when it reach at the dip, then there are two possibilities. Either just population will disappear or population will recover. So one of my hypotheses or one of my prediction based on my expertise, the population was going through a bottleneck phase and now it is recovering. So that's one of my possible answer which I, I, I elaborated. Now another thing which I uh, answered during my possible thoughts is decontamination. We are not decontaminating ourselves when we are moving between groves and that's how it's spread. The, f it, the most active stage of this millibug in, in its whole life cycle is first and star and size of first and star is less than one millimeter. So it can move through different ways. I can think of three possible ways. As a human, we can, when we touch the plant, it can go through our hands. Other way, our mechanical tools, which we use for pruning or other, other stuff. And the third is the wind. I'll be uh, talking about the next slide. So I, I want to focus right away in the start of my presentation that decontamination could be one of the possible reason why population explodes. It, this is a general concept for various, insect, uh, various invasive species. So we, how I decontaminate myself, that, that works and that can be a, one of a uh, helpful tip for you. I use 70% ethanol and I spray them on my hands because the hands are the, are the actually most Basically, we are touching them through our hands. So hands, hands is something, first thing I will spray. And of course, then you can spray your gloves or your hands or your shoes. So 70% ethanol works. If it's more than 70%, at 80%, that is better. 70% helps. So you are decontaminating yourself. And then you need to prevent as well. So de you de decontaminate yourself by spraying on your hands, spraying on your shoes, or spraying on your gloves. Then there will be other possibilities. It can basically go through a tool, mechanical tools or mechanical uh, or physical ways which you are using for pulling equipment or other equipment which you are using in the field. So those equipments need to be also decontaminated. So that's, that's, uh, that's something which is in our control and we can do it and then after decontaminating you need to prevent it how can you prevent the spread when you are visiting the grove which is heavily infested you decide to basically go another grove or you go another location you read i i would rather not go to two groves or not visit two groves in the same day if one grove is heavily infested because i could carry the infestation with me so there are, there are different ways. And it can also spread through wind. So if one plant in one corner of your field is infested, as the picture at the bottom it shows that wind can easily blow this from one plant to close a neighboring plant and infestation can move. 
So decontamination and preventing is something which I wanted to focus right away in my talk. Let's move towards millibugs of Florida. There are, there are over 90 species of millibugs in Florida. And the common millibug species which we have seen, I brought the pictures here, are including the back millibug, there's a citrus millibug, and then there's a cotton millibug, and there's a papaya millibug, long tail millibug, and pink hibiscus millibug. So it's very hard to distinguish them in the field. With close observation, you will see all of them are covered with the wax. And if you remove wax, you will find different colors of bodies. Some of them have light yellow body, some of them have a brown body. But the back millibug, if you see in the picture, is the dark purple. So if you are finding a dark purple body under wax, it's most probably the back millibug. It's a genus character, it's not a species character, but you still have to confirm the species by sending samples so you can have, you can put a right name on it. So dark purple on, on, on the top left, you can see, is, distingu is very distinguishing from other millibugs. If you see citrus millibug, it has little uh, filament coming out of it. And there's a longitudinal ridge, which is basically remove uh, uh, no wax on that longitudinal ridge. That's a citrus millibug. And then a long tail millibug has a long tail. And pink hibiscus millibug has a, a light brown a body which basically uh, uh, eggs has eggs usually are pink. There, there are there are there are ways to distinguish millibugs, distinguishing the back millibug from other millibugs in Florida. And most of millibugs they they have a broad host range and they consider pest. So let's move to the back millibug. One thing which I notice most of people they they don't realize. There's a sexual dimorphism between, milli, between millibugs, male and female. And we can identify species only based, based on literature, we can identify only on adult female basis. So male has wing, female has no wing. So that's something which I wanted to show you. Now let's move towards the symptoms. What are the damage symptoms when you are in the field? White wax, so if you are entering the field, you see the white wax, that's right away will tell you that this is millibug infestation because millibugs, they, 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 they produce heavy wax. If there is a sooty mold, that's additional evidence. And if there is a misshaping of the fruit, that's, that will add an additional evidence. And then we've observed twisting. Leaves are twisted when there is a heavy infestation. So all these will tell you there is infestation of the back millibug. But these are the symptoms when infestation is heavy. When infestation is not heavy or infestation is at its early stage, that's, that's the challenging point. That's actually one of the main reasons why we cannot detect it at early stage. And in, within, within a month or two, infestation increase just blow up, it just explodes. And this happened for more, for more, there are more species and they also have similar trend. So how can you detect at early stage? That's, that's something, that's something which we, we really need to know if we are, we really want to detect it and protect our uh, groves or infestation which can reach at the level where the damage is really heavy. And there are evidence in, from other countries where infestation was, where in the back millibug infestation caused over 50% loss in production. So when you know there's a heavy damage which can be done with this millibug, this millibug can cause heavy damage, so what can you basically do to make sure it will not reach at that economic threshold level where the infestation are out of, infestation is out of control and your production is getting lost. So that's early infest, uh, uh, detecting at early infestation is the key. So how can you do? So we observed so far, because there's not too much literature available, Lauren is working on it, we observed so far that it likes new growth, new flushes. So if the plant has new growth, new flushes, first and star basically move 
towards new growth. And in new growth, there are certain nodes, which are basically new growth nodes, and the axle, which is basically connecting the stem with the leaf, that basically is the favorite place for this first star, or for this millibug to hide. And then the connection between branches, and one thing which we observed lately, under the calyx button, I observed, I received samples for, uh, for, uh, detect, for basically identification, and the fruit has no infestation. Apparently, you cannot find any infestation on that fruit. But when I pulled that calyx button, I found heavy infestation hidden under that calyx. So these are the observations which we have so far. We still work, Lauren is still working on it, and I'm, I'm still getting more samples, and I, our observation will be more, uh, more realistic in, with the passage of time. But these observations which we still have can help you to detect at early stage. So here's the example which I was telling you about. On my left, you can see the calyx has no sign of infestation. But when you pull the calyx button, you will see heavy infestation inside. So now when you enter in any grove or you find any plant which is infested with this millibug, there are further ways to confirm. One of the ways, if you crush its body, you will find a dark purple liquid from its body. That's, that's the genus character. But that can actually tell you if it is in a citrus with this heavy infestation, it's a dark liquid coming out of its body, it's a labac millibug. Another way, when you put that labac millibug body in ethanol, 70% ethanol, the body turns into dark black color. These observations are also in your field guide, which is basically in your package. We, 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 we mentioned there these observations. But this, these, are some, these are some ways to confirm the back millibug in a field. But if you have any doubt, any confusion, you don't want to misidentify it, or you don't want to put a wrong name on it, and in future create a situation where you have a different infestation, or you have a mixed population of another pest, and you are trying so in millibugs and in scales, management practices can be species-based. Because when you are calibrating insecticide, or when you are applying certain insecticides, their rate of insecticide can change with the species. So if you are in applying insecticide for cottony cushion scale, but you are trying to control the back millibug, you're not going to be able to control it easily. So another thing which I am observing in the field, it's interesting for you to know that 50% sample which I am receiving, about 50% sample which I am receiving, there is no millibug in them. There is only wax and white mold. So what happened that we go in the field and we find a white wax, we just assume millibug infestation is there. Millibug, you, you applied your insecticide, you applied your practices, you might have control it, but the vex takes time to, to go away. So if vex is there, you cannot just assume it is alive. So I'm receiving a good number of samples which has only dead bodies inside. And when I receive dead bodies, I also try to, try to confirm whether it seems like it died recently. If it died recently, most probably your control might have worked. If it died, lo died long time ago, there's a possibility female laid eggs. When female laid eggs, after a after certain period, uh, period of time, female died. So it's very important for you to, distinguishing be to distinguish between dead and alive population. This is one example. You can see the body. This is the dead body. This is another example of dead bodies. You can see this millibugs. Is, is basically, uh, is, is, billy bug is there, wax is there, but the body is dead inside. One of the, one of the way to check whether milly bug is alive or dead, you can crush it, and if the liquid is coming, it's, it's alive. So now I switch gear towards predatory beetle of this milly bug. It was very interesting to see in the field, there were places where infestation was very heavy, 
and there, was, there were natural enemies are also present in the field. But unfortunately, this beetle looks exactly like, when it is in immature stage, it looks exactly like millibug rats. So you cannot distinguish this predatory beetle from, uh, from the, the back millibug. If you see the vex, which is light yellow, and on that top of the vex, there's a bright white color larva sitting of millibug. So if you're looking at the vex, you can just assume what there's just vex there. This is the millibug vex. You may easily miss the larva sitting on that vex because it's white. It's the same. It's, it has a vexy appearance and it look like the vex. But if you notice, this this vex has a long filament coming from the margin, and it's a little brighter as compared to millibug vex. When millibug is at early stage, the millibug vex is also bright white. This is a later stage of millibug vex. So you can easily confuse ladybird beetle. No, it's not. Sorry, it's not a ladybird beetle. It's a predatory beetle. You can easily confuse this predatory beetle larva with the back millibug vex. So uh, if you see on, on the left, millibug, on, on the left, extreme left is a millibug, and on millibug there's, there's a larva with a white filament coming from the margin. And the, on the bottom is a life cycle of uh, predatory beetle. You see, it starts with the eggs, then the first instar, second, third, and fourth instar. These four instars, which are immature instar of predatory beetle look exactly like millibug vets. So you can easily confuse it. I hope you are being attentive because there are quiz now. Can you see predatory larva here in this picture? How many cannot see it? How many of you cannot see it? I guess most of you can see. So how many of Predatory larvae are there in this picture. I think if you can see, that's more than enough for me. It is here. This is another picture. Can you see predatory larvae in this picture? If you can see, or if you cannot see, please let me know. You can see, I guess, right? So here they are. So it's, it's hard to distinguish. You have to go close, you go to close up to see, because if this larva is really effective, this, this predatory beetle is effective, it can help. So if it can help, you need to know it. So this is the last quiz. Let's see if you can distinguish between natural enemy infestation, well, I shouldn't say infestation. Can you see if this is labellibug infestation or there are predatory beetle larvae there? How many of you think that this is millibug infestation? I, I will be very honest. If I go in the field and I see this from the far, I will say this is labellibug millibug infestation. If it is in the citrus, it is on the citrus tree, the scenario and the situation will mislead me to say, yes, it, it, it seems like a millibug infestation. But I want to go close and I want to observe it from the close and you will see there are predatory larvae here. So can you, so do you think predatory larvae there will be just sitting there themselves? They need a food. So they are there feeding on something. So there it seems like there was infestation of the back millibug and now predatory larvae are feeding on them. So this is another scale which I found during my survey in the field, during, during our survey of the back millibug. It's called brown, coffee brown scale. It was, it is basically, it is in Florida here for a while and you may find it in the field as well. The reason I brought this up because I found it and also, it also excrete sometimes honeydew and it costs sutimor. So may, sutimor can mislead towards other scales. So it's a brown scale, which is basically brown in color and shape is doom-like shape. 
Then there is the green scale. I also found this in heavy infestation in some places during the back millibed survey. So this is also here in Florida and you may find it as well. And it also cause sooty mold. It is great honey use and cause. So now, but they don't treat wax. So wax is very, very good indication of the back millibed. So how you can send us sample now or how can you can send sample to Lauren? Lauren will be commenting on it. I just very quickly go through so you should know. As I mentioned before, half of samples which almost half of sample which I am receiving has wax only. There is no body inside. So yesterday we visited one grove and grower, grower was very confident when insecticide worked. And it worked on that tree and I couldn't find any alive body on it. But then I started looking this next tree and I did find a live millibug on it. So it's, it's a, I cannot identify based on vex. I need a body so I can put a name on it. And if you are sending me vex and there is a body there and you based on vex I identify it, there is no specimen in it or there is no scale in it and then there is a scale then it means I am giving a false positive result or false negative result. So it's important when you collect, you put those, you need to find adult female. If you find adult female, put those adult females in wild. And you can send plant material as well. You cannot just send uh, plant material full of wax and then I cannot identify based on wax. If I cannot identify ba based on wax, I would say there is no millibug and you are confident there is no millibug, but millibug could be there. So this is our sheet, sample submission sheet, which is available online on our Division of Plant Industry website. Lauren commenting more on it. Only thing which I will bring up here, when you are sending anything related to Lebec millibug, you can write Lebec millibug in a remark section. So we can give it priority and we can try to identify it faster. You can mark it urgent as well. That is one of way for us to give you a result faster. Yeah, that's all.